from robot cabin crew to regenerative travel experiences, innovation is breathing new life into the tourism sector and profits are predicted to soar. Welcome to The Exchange from our studio here in Doha. Coming up on this episode, CEO and founder of the tourism space, Tina O'Dwyer, shares her thoughts on the rising popularity of regenerative tourism and its impact on the future of the industry. And Chief Commercial Officer of Qatar Airways, Thierry Antinori, gives us a glimpse into the future of air travel. Now, a recent report by the World Economic Forum indicates that the future of tourism will be driven by technological innovation and big changes to the way tourists want to experience new destinations when they travel. But one of the biggest emerging trends is a shift from traditional tourism focused on consumption to regenerative tourism, an approach where companies focus on creating a positive impact on local communities and the environment. And as taste change analysts are predicting that revenues across the sector will continue to rise. According to Statista, a leading online statistics portal, the tourism market as a whole is predicted to reach $916 billion of sales this year and grow annually at a rate of 3.9%, resulting in a market value of $1.1 trillion by 2029. Well, like so many other industries, artificial intelligence continues to transform the tourism sector. Innovations like biometrics at check-in desks and even robot assistants are popping up at airports all over the world. Recent analysis by software engineering firm EPAM predicts that tourism-specific AI will be worth $1.2 billion by 2026. Technological advancements are changing attitudes and putting the travel sector firmly back on track. Now, Tina O'Dwyer is CEO and co-founder of The Tourism Space, specialists in helping companies to develop regenerative tourism practices. I asked her how far new attitudes to travel might ultimately change people, communities and the planet. More than most other industries, tourism can do a lot for the well-being of places, the well-being of people, understanding of different cultures, uh, broadening education and minds, and, all, and, and also really enhancing biodiversity and nature conservation through the way it carries out its activities. And I think if tourism started to see the positive parts it could bring to the sustainability and regeneration ag agenda, then we'd really see a positive model emerging into the future. It's not easy to make profit, but it's also not easy to save the planet. So we need to see profitable local businesses that can endure in communities over long periods of time. And we also need to recognize that it's going to require many more stakeholders than the businesses to influence our planetary conditions. So what does regenerative tourism look like in reality? Our reporter, Phil Stebbing, went to Wairapa in New Zealand to find out more. Hi, Guy. I'm here at Pukaha National Wildlife Centre, an award-winning leader in New Zealand's bid for regenerative tourism to boost local economies and to restore the environment. Pukaha contains just 900 hectares of a vast forest which indigenous Māori people once depended upon. This forest was literally our home, our food source and our medicine basket. We had to be integrated into a culture with their different perspectives on who we were as a people, and it wasn't always right. Today, Pukaka Tourism Revenue is helping redress past wrongs. Funding an education centre and meeting house, it's all part of regenerating the Māori community. I'm very pleased to see how they are preserving uh, their culture. The kids got to experience the carving, Carvers were very gracious, talking about history behind the different objects. For tourists, there are comfortable lodges to rent, and six sites provide power for happy campers, which all brings in important revenue. I know the money that I'm spending here is all going towards the regeneration of this forest, and the stories that are being told about the tribes that live in this area and the importance of this amazing place. Unlike other tourist businesses, Pukaka is not just focused on profit margins. We're not about just ensuring that the visitor numbers are coming through the large quantities. When we talk about regenerative tourism, we're trying to revitalise us as a people. It's about telling the stories. 
Regenerative tourism then is partly about people before profits. But what about the very biggest travel brands? How are they planning to reshape the future of the sector? Thierry Antonori is the chief commercial officer of Qatar Airways. They recently retained their crown as Skytrax Airline of the Year. I sat down with Thierry here in Doha and I asked him to explain what the future has in store for travel and tourism. I think the customer is looking for a convenient and efficient and value for money solutions in each segment. The customer has a very bright future. We drive a lot of improvement in the customer experience. It's already the case today, but as a biometrics, for instance, will considerably improve the customer experience at the airports. Uh, I think the artificial intelligence will generate better content for the customer. Uh, Qatar Airways, we are very focused on that. Uh, we have the first uh, digital human ca uh, cabin crew named Sama. We showcase our cabins through this new technology. Uh, you will get more and more relevant um, personalized offer for you fitting your needs, fitting the needs of your families. Uh, that's what the customer can uh, expect. Now it's time for our regular feature, Business in 60 Seconds, start the clock. Celtic PLC is preparing to announce its full year 2024 earnings release. The world famous Scottish football club is currently working on redeveloping its Barrafield training ground, aiming to create a top facility for youth and women's football. Construction is now underway after a long planning process. Investors will be interested to see how this project will affect its financial results in the coming year. British clothing and home products retailer Next PLC is preparing to announce its half year 24 earnings. The company is continuing its international expansion and is negotiating franchise and license partnerships across Asia. Toys R Us ANZ Limited, the Australian and New Zealand branch of the toy retailer, is set to announce its full year 2024 results. After exiting the UK market and transferring all assets to True Kids, the company is now focused on strengthening its presence in Australia. Investors will be eager to see how this move will drive growth in the Australian market. As we look to the future of tourism, AI is transforming how we travel, while regenerative practices ensure we do it responsibly. Together, they're creating a new era of tourism that benefits both us and the planet, where technology and care for the environment go hand in hand. Well, that's all we have time for on this edition of the show. Thank you for watching. Please do check out euronews.com for all your latest business news. And join us again next time on The Exchange.